Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope I find you well this evening. Hey, it's been a wonderful week. It's been a wonderful month. We had an awesome service on Sunday with our father and our mom. And you know, they made us to see where we come from. They made us to reflect how far the Lord has taken us. And it was an awesome service. I started to reflect and to look back and I said, Lord, you are so good. Truly, it has been by your word that we are where we are now. And you know, it was so amazing. And I want to appreciate our spiritual parents. Pastor Strike and Pastor Joelin for the journey that they have walked with us, the journey that they have walked and we have joined them along this journey and today look at where we are. I want to appreciate their leadership as a son in the house. I want to appreciate their leadership. I look at my own life and I see that truly my life has changed. Even people that you know, look at me, people that see me, they are amazed of the men that have turned out to be. They are amazed of a father that I've turned out to be. You know, it is because of the work that they have put through the word that they have taught me, the word that they have instilled in me. And today I am standing, I am standing before you this evening. Uh, please pardon me. I will keep on saying I am standing because right inside I am standing. You know, I'm a preacher of the word. I want to stand. I want to talk. I want to use my hands. I want to do all these things. So I will keep on saying saying I am standing before you because of what they saw in my life because of how they encouraged me because of the time that they took to model me and not me alone but the many of us that have come through their hands I remember when we started our father used to say you cannot sit under my preaching and remain the same and we never used to understand this statement you know he would always say that you cannot sit under my preaching and remain the same he was talking about the word that he was teaching us and through the word that he taught us today we are men and women of God today we are successful family people today we are successful business people today we are standing we have overcome many battles that we've faced in our lives because of the word that he shared because of the word that pastor Joelin shared today we are speaking the word of god and i want to encourage us on that basis the basis of the word of god the importance of the word of god last week we spoke about the word taking you through but today i want to talk about the creative power of the word of god the creative power of the word of god that is my message for today and we are going to find our scripture reading from the book of john john 1 and we are going to read verse 1 to verse 4 and it reads as follows in the beginning was the word and the word was with god the word was god he was in the beginning with god all things were made through him Without him, nothing was made. In, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And when we go to verse, four, verse 14, and then the word of God says, And the word became flesh. I want us to talk about the word of God this evening. The importance of the word of God. And I believe in Zalona that you are where you are. You've made it this far. As we celebrate 20 years, we look back and we see that we have made it this far because of the word of God. And unfortunately, we cannot stop and depend on the word that we used when the church started. We need to continue to get into the word of God because the word of God is fresh every day like the name of the church manna the word of god is fresh every day and as manna tabernacle it is required of us that to, today we can have the word tomorrow we must continue to search for word that's why we are called manna manna tabernacle and i want to say to you Mzalona, it is the word that has brought us this far the word that we've been taught they've been teaching us the word for these past 20 years Every opportunity that they stood before us, they taught us the word of God. And I remember when Pastor Strike, when the church started, and he said the church's name is going to be Mana Tabernacle. And he said the vision is going to be transforming nations by transforming individuals. But he had to give us the fuel. How are we going to attain to this vision? How are we going to become transformers? How are we going to be transformed ourselves? And he said to us, you know what the word that he gives us? He said Mana Tabernacle will be known as an oasis of love so the oasis of love became you know the foundation with which we were to build for us to attain to the greater vision of transforming nations by transforming individuals and uh, truly we are testimonies of how he reached to us you know he reached to us 
through love. He reached to us and raised us as sons and as daughters of Mana Tabernacle. He reached to us through love. It, it, Mana Tabernacle has been uh, built on the basis of love. And you know what? I remember that word. It is the word that he spoke. It is the word that he believed. It is the word with which the church was rooted. Till to date, when people come to Mana Tabernacle, they will tell you, they come for the first time, they will tell you that, wow, you know what drew, what drew me to Mana Tabernacle from the first day? It was love. How much love was shown to me. And I want to say to Mzalone, that word was spoken when 20 years ago, and we are still the oasis of love till today. We are still grounded around love till today. And Pastor Strike will, will always say that if you disrespect the person that sits next to you, if you do not take if you take to, if you take for granted the person that sits next to you, that will be the last time you'll be in his church. And through that, he, he taught us and he need us in love. And today we speak love. And I want to say to you, Mzalone, that was the word that, you know, grounded us. That is the word that was released to us. And as we read this passage of scripture, which says, in the beginning was the way. You know, in the beginning, before everything was created in the foundations of the world, was the word. And the word was with God. You know, and the word was God. We are talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in verse 14 it says, the word became flesh when Jesus Christ became part of us and walked this world. The word of God, you know, it says, in the word of God, we discover that Jesus, throughout his life and ministry, he operated with the word. He spoke the word. He professed the word. And he left us with the word. Who is this word? It is Jesus Christ. And this word, because the word of God says that when we are born, when we, when we go through the process of being born again, we receive, you know, Christ. We believe with our hearts and we confess with our mouth and we are born again. And Christ comes and dwells in us. The word comes and dwells in us. And it becomes a responsibility for me and you to speak the word. It becomes a responsibility for me and you to be the drivers of the word. Because once we are born again, we are given the capacity to carry the word. We are given the room and the authority to use the word. That's why Jesus Christ said to us, you know what? These things that I have done, even greater things you will do. And when you look at the, the ministry of Jesus Christ, it was characterized by the word. When, when, when the centurion comes to him and he says, my servant is not well, Jesus says, no, I will come and heal him. But the centurion says, speak a word and my servant will be healed. Because he understood that Jesus could only speak a word and things will happen. And so same applies with us. When Jesus says, I will leave you and greater things you will do. He was saying to us, you will be able to speak a word in whatever situation you are faced. You will be able to speak a word. But you see what's important in Zalwani is that you must have that word in you. You must believe in you. You must have that belief that this is the word. You must take the word into yourself because out of the abundance of the of the heart the mouth will speak you know we will speak what we know we will speak what we believe and once we do that when we speak what we believe it comes to life so the word of god has to be planted in us the word of god has to be in built in us so that we can open our mouth and speak and things will begin to change in this season that we are going through as much as mana faced challenges all all her life to where she is right now. She faced challenges. You know, she had many challenges. But it is the word of God that kept us going. It is the word of God that kept us going to say, you know what? This is a journey that we are in. Manatamanagli, it's a journey that you are in. But you must continue. I remember one time. It was in the early 2000s. We were in, uh, while we were still in town on our Wednesday service. After the word had just been preached. And when we left the church, one of our now pastors, uh, Pastor Nguna, you know, when he walked out only to find that his car was stolen. And I'm telling you, those were the challenges that we were, our pastors had to face. What do you say now? A member of the church. And I think he was coming for the first time. But because of the word that was preached during that service, Papankuna is still part of the church. Pastor Nkuna is still part of the church 
till today because of the way that was shared. Nothing else. We didn't have the money. The pastor didn't have the money to buy him another car. But all what the pastors had was the word. They continued to give him the word. They continued to encourage him. And he took the word that was shared in that particular day. And till today, he has bought cars after cars because of that word. And I want to say to you, Mzalwani, as much as we are facing challenges today, Remember that Mana Tabanek, for her 20 years, she has faced the word. She has faced challenges, but it is the word that has brought her this far. And uh, you know, this past Sunday, we were celebrating, we were cutting the cake and saying, thank you, Jesus. But it does not mean the road of Mana Tabanek was without storms. No, the word of Mana Tabanek was full of storms. It was characterized by storms. But the resilience that our pastors taught us through the word have brought us this far and the ministry is standing and the ministry is going forward for many more years to come because of nothing else but the word they they taught us the word gave us the word and i want to say to you mzalwane the word is available from the beginning of genesis to the end in revelation the word has been given to me and you that we should use at this time you know in the book of genesis chapter 1 verse 26 when god says you know let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness so that man can have dominion what is dominion dominion is to take the authority of the word and use it in your life. And I want to say to you, Mzalwana, you have dominion over that sickness. You have dominion over that COVID-19. You have dominion over that financial situation. You have got dominion over that marital situation. You have been given dominion. But all that dominion is hidden in the word of God. When you take the word of God, when you read the word of God, and you own the word of God, and the word of God begins to live in you, when you say it, it becomes life. When you say it, it changes situation. We look at our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he had power over nature. He had power over nature. When the storms rose, Jesus only said, peace be still. Because he had the word in him. He knew who he was. And I want to say to you, Mzalwane, when the Bible says that we have overcome by the word, you know, of our testimony. The word of our testimony is gathered from the word of God is gathered from our conquest with the word of God and we stand up and we confess the word of our testimony which is the word that we received when we got born again who is Jesus Christ in us the hope of glory I want to say to you Mzalon, it is difficult out there we are challenged COVID-19 is a storm that has come into our lives and it is touching even our own members in the church it is touching even our own family members and I want to say to you the word of God is alive and my God said I've sent my word to heal your diseases and I want to say to you Mzalwana even as I testify you know this uh, this evening my brother was was diagnosed with COVID-19 he was COVID-19 positive and uh, we stood and we looked at my brother and I called my pastor I said hey my pastor this thing has come home and my brother my brother is is an asthmatic person and you know what he was coughing he was shrugging but when we engaged in prayer and we said by the stripes of Jesus Christ he is healed when we stood to fight and we engaged in the word and we knew that the word is full of life and I can testify and tell you that my brother is strong my brother is sleeping my brother you know what he sleeps at night and he wakes up and he is strong and you know what he has said that there is nothing that raised him up except the word of God except the name of Jesus Christ for as we mentioned the name of Jesus Christ our brother was saved and I want to say to you Mzalwane I want to say to you you might be positive out there and you, you know you might be even having underlining condition take this as a testimony take this as what you carry going forward take this as your word that my own brother is alive my own brother he's recovered my own brother is strong my own brother has overcome by nothing else but the word of our testimony and i want to say to you Mzalwane, you might be listening to me here you've been at mana tabernacle for years and years and i'm talking about a man 
I'm talking about a man, you know, who does not even go to church. He will visit her because of the wife, you know. But he's not a person committed to church. But in that week, as Pastor Jailene was lead us on, leading us on joy comes in the morning, I sent him the messages. I sent him all the messages. Or you know that our pastor led. And he listened to those messages. The man began to live. The man began to be alive. Because the word is a source of life. The word that is shared on this platform by our pastors. The word is a source of life. When you know what? He listened to the word. He believed that the dry bones that stood before him. That there is life in those dry bones. He looked at his asthma. He looked at his situation. He thought it was finished with him. But when he received that word, he started to speak as Ezekiel as spoke. You know, he started to speak and he began to have life. And I want to say to you, Mzalwani, even in your own situation, my brother, my sister, in your own situation, it might look like the dry bones. But as our pastor shared last week, I want to say to you, in the midst of those dry bones, prophesy, son of man, Prophesy by the daughter of the living God. Prophesy against that situation. Speak the word of God. The word that we have been taught. Speak the word of God. Speak life. Speak life to your situation. Because we have been given the word. And there is nothing else that we can use. We have been given the word. You look at Jesus. Jesus has used nothing else except the word. Jesus has used nothing else except the word. He used the word and he stood, he rebuked the storm. When Bartimaeus came to him, he said, what is it that I must do for you? And he, Bartimaeus said, that I may see. And he said, open your eyes and see. He used the word. He released the word. He used nothing else. And he says to the centurion, so because of your faith, your servant is healed. He used the word. And that is what our master wants us to do. And he says to us, greater things shall you do because I am going to be with the Father. Greater things. And this is a season where we need those greater things. This is a season where we need men and women that will, stood, that will stand radically and stand and face this enemy and go straight into these troops of COVID that are coming our way. And I want to say to you, my brother and my sister, do not be clothed with fear. Do not be clothed with doubt. Do not be clothed, you know, with, uh, by the words of the enemy. There is so many words that are released in the atmosphere right now. Words that are pregnant with fear. Words that are pregnant with doubt. I want to say to you, the word of God says you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus Christ. The word of God says you are an overcomer. The word of God says you are of God, all little children. Greater is he that is in you than the one that is out there in the world. I want you, my brother, take that word, carry that word, speak that word. In this season, let it be the time where you suck yourself in the way. Mazalona, let it not be the time where we play. Let it not be the time where we do not feed ourselves with the word of God. Let this be the time where we feed ourselves with the word of God. Let this be the time where we listen to messages. Let this be the time where we share messages. Look at me. I shared the messages of my pastor. I shared the messages of my pastor, the prayers that my pastor was praying. Just on that joy comes in the morning, that 15 minute session. My brother is alive. My brother is alive. He was telling me that I am ready to go back to work. I'm talking about a guy who has had asthma, a history of asthma from when he was a small child. I'm talking about the same guy. I'm talking about the guy who thought it is over with him. I'm talking about a guy who thought, you know what? I am not going to make it here because of asthma. But I'm telling you, we gave him the word. We prayed for him. But I believe that him, you know, listening to the word is what gave him strength. It is what changed his confession. It's what changed his language. The word that we share. And I want to say, Mzalana, we can be lazy and do everything. Let's not be lazy to a point so that we cannot share the messages that our pastors are giving. On Sunday, our father was preaching and was talking about the importance of this word in this season, in this stormy life. This is a time where it's so stormy. But I want to say to you, Mzalwana, there is somebody that 
needs that word. It might be good for you, but remember, there are people that need that word. There are people that are not as strong as you are. There are, not, there are people that do not have the word that you have inside. Share this word. Let people laugh. Let people be encouraged. Because when we check, most people, this thing comes and overshadows us and destroys them because they lose hope. Most people, because they are encountered with fear. But when the word of God comes, it, you know, it, it chases fear. When light comes, darkness runs away. And I want to say to you, as you give people messages, you are giving them, you are giving them the light. You are giving them freedom. You are giving them hope. You are giving them strength. And when they begin to rise up, and they begin to, they begin to declare the word of God. They begin to say, I will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. We have a duty to preach this way. We have a duty to share this way. And I want to say to you, Salon, this word is alive. And this word is an engine of change. But it needs kingdom agents. It needs ambassadors that will stand up and share this way. And I want to say to you, we have seen this way. And I want to encourage you to say, this word is alive, Um Salon. This word is alive. Look at your life. Look at where your life is now. Look at the life of Mana Tabernacle. You know, when we started, we never knew that we will, we, we, will, we will be where we are today. I remember just before 2010, I think it was in 2019, when we were at our tent designed and looking so good inside, decorated. There came a storm and took away the tent. The storm came and took away the tent. We did not sit down and cry and our pastor said, what shall we do? He said, you know what? He said to us, this is what we are going to do. We are going to build. We are building. And I'm telling you, because we stood, we believed in the word of God that yes, challenges are there. But we go through a troop. We leap over walls. We believe the word of God that we are above. We are not below. We believe the word of God that we are the heads and we are not the tail. And we stood within five months. The auditorium was built and it's standing till to date. And it was opened in July 2010. Having been built from the end of January. In less than in five months it was done. We stood against the odds. We stood against what the enemy wanted us to see. And I want to say to you, stand. They can say that, you know what, eh, 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 this thing is growing. You see the numbers are growing. We're about 13,000 every day. I want to say to you, my brother, we are in a battle. We are in a storm, my sister. This is not the time to sit down and cry. This is not the time to, you know, to take and put your hands like we usually do over your head. No, but this is the time to stand. Confess the word of God. This is the time, you know, as Christians that we cry before God. We call upon his name. We are called Christians because we are Christ-like and have been given authority to use the word. Have been given authority to change the course of things. We have been given authority to challenge nature. And as the storm of COVID rises... I want to say to you, our Father is raising the standard against this COVID-19. Be assured of that. But you need to believe it. You need to own it in your heart and release it with your mouth. Because when you release it, it comes with power. It comes with authority. It comes with faith. Because you are talking about what you know. And I want to say to you, Salwar, you have a duty. You have a duty to stand and be strong. You have a duty to encourage many. This is the time wherein everybody of us is an evangelist. This is the time wherein everybody of us need to stand up and say, People, it is the word of God. It is the word of God, nothing else. We need to encourage even our fellow Christians that have lost it along the way. We need to encourage them and tell them nothing else that Jesus used in his walk. Nothing else except the word. When he healed the sick, he used the word. When he rebuked the demons, he used the word. When he rebuked the storm, he used the word, nothing else. Let's encourage our people. And I want to thank you for the time that we've had tonight. And may God richly bless you as you stand and take your part and play your part and share this message and make sure that you encourage somebody. Like I told you, I shared the message to my brother. My brother is alive today. I shared the message to my brother. My brother is strong and his family is strong today because we share the word that our pastors are teaching us. And may God richly bless you. 
May you stand and be strong. Let's continue to pray and pray for people in authority. Let's continue to pray and pray for essential workers. It is our duty. It is our call. And may our God richly bless you. In the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus Christ. I thank you. Amen.